All right, good morning again. Can I have your attention? I know you're excited to start the commencement service. And so we're going to ask you to kindly please take your seats. And then I'm also going to ask you to keep the center aisle clear. And then at around 10 o'clock, we'll begin our processional. So if I could have you in the center aisles to please find your seats. So we can start this on time. If you're in the center aisle, can you please find a seat and then we can start our commencement service.
Let's remove our hats and caps and bow our heads for opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the time we've had here together for these past four years. For all the friends and memories we've made and shared, we thank you for our parents, teachers, and mentors and loved ones who have given their time, energy, and energy so that we can graduate today. As this chapter in our life closes and a new one begins, may we all remember to keep you first in our lives and bring all the glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. morning. I have the privilege today of introducing our speaker. And um, he has been our teacher here and our IT director for two and a half years. He enjoys spending time and traveling with his family. He's passionate about Jesus and he loves ge ge genealogy. Excuse me. Um, and I had the opportunity of taking one of his classes this year, and I was part of his faculty family last year. And he's just a fun guy to be around. And I think one thing that I will never forget is his crazy driving. It was always a fun car ride when you were with him. I present to you Mr. Todd Gardner. They don't uh, put pockets in these outfits. Thank you, Angel. That was very sweet, except for the driving part. <laughs> Thank you to each one of the parents and family who've come today, and for my beloved staff, who it's a pleasure to work with. But I want to especially thank you, students, for adopting me into your class family this last year. Um, you know, the role of a class sponsor is to be assigned to a student body, follow them for all four years. And uh, that is um, a real privilege and a joy to actually hold their hand the whole way through that process. Um, it has been the privilege of Dario and Sidi to be with them for these first three years. And for me, I'm just the new kid in the class. And yet you guys have made me feel really welcome. And for that, I really appreciate it. And uh, I want to thank Dario and CD for setting the bar high. I appreciate it very much. You may notice in your program that there is a blank spot in the name field there. And uh, I just thought that I would give you a little bit of information on that. Uh, the class made a long list of the people that they were interested in having speak. Um, many people were unavailable, and uh, that's not very unusual. My name was on that list, but boy, I kept telling them, you know, I have a busy weekend already. It would be pretty crazy to try to squeeze that in. At first, I wondered if it was a joke, um, but uh, I offered to be a backup. And CD and I and others, we prayed about it. And uh, as the Lord would have it, uh, we attempted to book an extremely well-known national figure. And uh, that would have created some hassles to come along with it. There would have been heightened security and... There would have been issues with the media and things like that. It might have stolen the moment from our class. And again, we left it all in the Lord's hands. And we found out just this last week that that was not going to work out. Uh, apparently, you can't land Air Force One at the Academy Air Park, I guess. No, not really. But seriously, God really always answers our prayers. He just rarely answers them on day one. Have you noticed this? God likes to test our faith and have us wait a little longer so that we're reliant on him. And for that, we can be grateful because it's a faith-building experience. So four days ago, we told our senior class that our speaker had fallen through and that, uh, that I would be their speaker. And much to my um, humble appreciation, uh, they applauded. And that's how I really knew that you guys, you know, appreciated me and accepted me as a part of the class and a part of the team. I'm really appreciative of that. It reminded me a little bit of my wife and I's wedding. Uh, we originally had uh, scheduled uh, Dwight Nelson, and he had said yes, and uh, it was, I think, four or five months. We had a one-year engagement into that before he announced he really was unable to all of a sudden because of some uh, thing that had came up. 
So we got another speaker, and he said yes. And a month and a half or two later, he said, I'm so sorry I have to back out on you. It's a no now. And we went through that. I was asking my wife. She really has lost count as well. But we, I think it was somewhere around seven pastors that we went through. And we started, I said, do you think this is an omen or something? And we don't believe in omens, but I'll tell you what. Uh, we had faith, and we pursued this uh, idea, and we finally were able to find Pastor Jerry Lefebvre, uh, who is a sweet, kind man and was willing to come help us out. And uh, here we are today, and it's a pleasure to be married to her. My father, uh, it's tough because when it comes to graduations, one does become nostalgic. You do think about the future, but uh, you also think about your last four years. Uh, my father would be very proud to see me dressed up like this today. Not because he'd see me on this platform, but all of my father's children made him proud in many different ways. There was a time I remember very, very well. I would assume I was somewhere around uh, maybe 10. And we were sitting at our, our kitchen table. And uh, my father worked all week, so he'd come home on Friday and he'd spend the weekend with us and he'd leave on Sunday to go back. He was a truck driver and uh, he drove steel for the auto industry. And I can remember um, this one weekend, uh, we were sitting together, and the t there's the normal, there's six of us in the family, so there's a normal conversational flow, uh, quite a little buzz maybe around the table. And uh, I don't remember how the conversation started, but I remember saying at the table, Dad, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like you and drive truck. And the whole table went silent. And my dad turned to me, and he said, you will never drive truck you're going to school. And I thought that was really, really neat. It stood out in my mind, and so I know he would be thrilled. The day that he drove us to Andrews University, he and my mother, and uh, he dropped me off there at Meyer Hall, I saw a twinkle in his eyes, a twinkle that I knew that he was very, very proud of me. He never got to see me graduate from college, unfortunately died a year later of cancer. But thinking back, I don't remember what my father looked like on the day of my academy graduation. I don't remember looking in his eyes. It's so difficult. There's so much going on that day. There's so much emotion that it's difficult to capture all of the essence of what today is. So I don't really remember that. You know, I guess I wouldn't say I was completely self-absorbed, but I surely was self-aware that day, and there was a lot going on. But seniors, I would encourage you to look at your families today this afternoon when you're spending time with them, this afternoon when you are hugging them out on the grass, capture for a moment the twinkle in their eyes because they are very proud of you. And I would let you know, and I know you know this, that your Father in Heaven is absolutely proud of every single one of you as well for your accomplishments. This graduation, yes, but each one of you have matured and grown in so many ways. It's just very impressive, and I'm proud of each one of you. It's a pleasure to be here today. You know, being the uh, commencement speaker is a little bit hard. In a way, it's a little bit like being the speaker at a conference right before lunch, right? You know everybody's like, all right, let's get going with this because we want to get to the good stuff. And uh, that's all right. Don't mind that too much. My father-in-law was a great father to me. I told you my dad had passed away when I was about 19. And after we married, my father-in-law became very close to me. And uh, he made an impression on me. He was a definite character, and he was outspoken, to say the least. I'm looking for my wife's face. Where is it? There you are. Okay, there. Yeah, you're hiding a little bit. My, yeah, your dad was a character, wasn't he? And, um, but I'll tell you what. I remember uh, weddings and funerals. Uh, Larry would say that, uh, you know, he says, I want, and he would. He would actually approach the pastor and say, listen, I don't want it too long, but I don't want it too short because I want my money's worth. And he was serious about both. So I hope today will be a happy medium for you guys. My um, youth, I grew up on a lake. Loved the water. It's always been in my soul. Loved boats, swimming. I can remember in the summer I would put on a swimsuit in the morning and I would take it off to climb into bed at night. And that was pretty much what I wore all summer. And my skin would show that. Um, when I got to Camp Asabo and I had the privilege of working at camp, uh, I remember I got introduced to a little sunfish. Now, we always had boats, but I never had a sailboat before. And there was a little sailboat there, and uh, actually several sailboats and the catamaran, which I was a little too fearful to get on right off the bat. I thought I better start small. And that little sunfish was really, really neat. 
and I enjoyed that. My wife, when we were dating uh, down at Andrews, uh, she actually rented uh, a boat called the Serenade. It's a 62-foot uh, boat, and uh, she just that's how I knew she knew me, that she really knew me because she knew that I appreciated the water and that I would really uh, enjoy that. We always were trying to one-up each other on our dating, and uh, after that, yeah, she, she won the cake right there. I don't know if everybody got a chance to see the senior class flag. I hope you did, maybe when it was marching down the aisle. But you'll notice there's a ship on that flag. And um, it's a new tradition this year that, that we've started. I love this tradition. That flag hung all year in the chapel, on the left-hand side of the chapel, if you're in the audience looking up. And last year's class flag hung on the right all year long for us to appreciate. It's a neat tradition because it gives us the opportunity to look and reflect on what we're seeing on those flags. And I had all year to do that. Of course, having a boat on it was pretty good for me. But I think that it's um, the motto that's stated on there that reads, we cannot direct the wind, but we can adjust the sails. That is an excellent idea and an awesome piece of advice. The flag reminds us to be flexible, to be going with the flow. As some would say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade kind of concept. We need to adjust our sails when the winds change. And you need to know that God is there to get you through it. But when I dwelled on what to speak about and when I prayed about it, it kept coming back to me that there was actually a hidden message in this flag. And actually, much to uh, the students to my left's uh, chagrin, there's physics involved, and there's a little bit of algebra, which might make Mrs. Heslop proud. The idea is, is there's, um, well, I'll tell you. I guess I didn't want you to think that there would be one less opportunity. If we can get another minute to squeeze in another little educational tip, we'll do that. Sailboats rely on three key components. Clearly, they rely on the wind. We all know this. Clearly, they also rely on the sails. And both of these are on your flag and very easy to see. But there's a third component without which you cannot sail in a straight line. And that component is the keel of the boat. It's hidden underneath the boat. And in this particular flag and in this particular image, that keel is somewhat missing. It's just not as obvious. The keel is that large fin that sticks down from the bottom of the boat underneath the water line, so it's not typically visible. On large ships, which you may think of as the typical piratey ships, uh, that keel is nice and deep and it runs the full length of that boat. Actually, when the boats are made, the keel is the first thing that's laid. And the laying of that keel is a significant event, so much so that there's a ceremony every time the keel is laid for a new boat. The o only thing that is a bigger ceremony is when the boat is actually launched. The keel is responsible for the stability of the boat. And most importantly, it counters the wind's direction by providing forward momentum. The relationship of all three of these components, the wind, the sail, and the keel, they form a triangle. I was thinking about how to do this without a whiteboard, and then I thought maybe I'd put something on the screen, and I thought, that's too much. But you can imagine this, because what happens is in sailing, you would imagine that the wind is coming in from one direction. The sail needs to be angled in another direction. And the keel makes that third part of the triangle. And obviously, you're looking for forward momentum. Without that keel, the boat will just slide across the water. When the wind pushes against it, the boat will just slide across the water. Instead, when the wind hits those sails and it comes against the resistance of that keel in the water, it forces the boat to slide forward through the water from the resistance from the far side of the keel. The keel is critical. The keel is not movable. The keel is a given. It's a prerequisite. It's required. The secret of the keel is actually in the text that's on your flag. That text is in Isaiah 43, 2. 
And I'd like to read that for you. My students and the seniors know that this year I have been uh, reading the Bible through in a different way. I'm reading it through chronologically this year, and I've really been enjoying that. Um, I've also been reading in a totally different version, as I told you guys, to give me just a little bit of a different viewpoint, a different angle. In a way, it's kind of like putting a brand new lamp in the living room. It's the same furniture, it's the same couch, it's the same chair, but that lamp now exposes cobwebs in a different corner. And not that there'd be cobwebs in my wife's family or in her house, but um, in my life there are cobwebs. And so I appreciate this new vantage point uh, to observe this. The text reads like this, and I'm gonna read not just the second verse, which is mentioned on the flag, but I'm going to read several of them here, 1 through 7. And this is in Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 7. Do not be afraid. I will save you. I have called you by name. You were mine. When you pass through the deep waters, I'll be with you. Your troubles will not overwhelm you. And when you pass through the fire, you will not be burned. The hard trials will not hurt you. For I am the Lord your God the holy God of Israel who saves you. I will give up Egypt to set you free. I'll give up Ethiopia and Seba. I will give up whole nations to save your life because you are precious to me and because I love you and I give you honor. Do not be afraid. I'm with you. From the distant east to the far west, I will bring your people home. I will tell the north to let them go and the south not to hold them back. Let my people return from the distant lands, from every part of the world, they are my own people, and I've created them to bring me glory. Now, I want you to carefully note in that second verse, and the reason I'm telling you this is I'm hoping that every time you come back to the school and you see your flag displayed up on the banners during the alumni weekend, or every time you're going back through your photo book and you're seeing this weekend from the pictures that your family's taken, I want you to recall that and remember yeah, that's a cool flag. Wow, ours is the only one that's got a boat on it up there. You know, most of them maybe are just words, some airbrushing, who knows. Yes, it's special, but that text makes it special too. And here's the part I want you to not lose sight of. In that second verse, yes, when you pass through the deep waters, I'll be with you. Your troubles will not overwhelm you. When you pass through the fire, you'll not be burned. And the hard trials will not hurt you. I have to say that when I read several versions here, it's maybe a little bit deceptive to say that they, that they won't hurt you. In fact, notice the text doesn't say there won't be hard trials. Notice that it doesn't say you won't pass through the fire. What we're really seeing here is you will be in deep water. You will pass through fire. There will be hard trials in your life. But the secret that comes along with it is that it's your Lord, your God, who is there to save you. You know, Great Lakes Adventist Academy is unbashedly a Christian school. Make no mistake, actually our first priority here is to indoctrinate our students, to teach them about Christ. Education is secondary, but just like Daniel and his three friends found out and they proved, that when you've got the first one, the second all falls in place. So if you thought that you're coming to Great Lakes today for this graduation, maybe you're not a Christian, and maybe you're just here for your graduate today, and you thought that uh, you might not get churched here today, I'm really sorry to disappoint you. But I suspect that God probably brought you here today to tug at your heart, to reintroduce you to him just one more time. Because God loves you, and he wants to be in your life, and here's what it really is about. He wants to be your keel. Students, when those storm clouds are dark, and they will eventually get dark in your life, and when the rain is in your eyes, keep your eyes on Jesus, as we've told you all along. Your compass heading straight forward and on your goal. Your Bible and your devotional life will keep you heading towards that ultimate goal. Keep your keel solid, keep, keep it clean, and keep it strong. Because God promises in our text that he will be there, and I want you to never forget that.
As our motto reminds us, we will get blown about. We can adjust the sail to change the direction, and that's awesome. But we need to remember that that only works if our keel is solid. Because if the keel gives way, you will drift in life. In fact, sometimes a little bit of change in the sails can bring about a lot of change in direction and in modem. Uh, mo uh, in uh, mo uh, movement, right? Change is unavoidable, but remember, sometimes change is actually desirable in your life. I suspect some of you will eventually leave here, and boy, I pray this isn't the case, but some of you may forget about God for a little while. And I hope that when you see that flag, that it's a trigger in your mind, and that that trigger in your mind causes you to ask yourself, is my keel strong? I don't really care that you remember that it was Mr. Gardner that gave the speech. I don't really care that, you know, you remember the speech at all. But I do want you to remember that we talked about a keel. And I want you to remember that the foundation of sailing, yes, involves you changing your sails, but it only works if your keel's strong. We handed each one of the seniors yesterday, I really have to thank Mrs. Heslop for it, a devotional book. That devotional book uh, was custom made for them and it has verses in there for them to study every day for the next five years because we want them to all come back here and we want to keep that keel strong in their lives there's already a text on there for you today seniors and as uh, some of you have already discovered on Facebook in our Facebook page for our class there's already some discussion going on about today's text so I encourage you to go back and finish that up today Help others to maintain their keel. There is a certain responsibility to that as well, you know. Sometimes we run into people that we love, and their keel is barnacle-clad. Their keel has uh, given way. It's weak. You don't need to be mean. You don't need to be harsh. But sometimes, I mean, these are the people you spent your life with. Your connection to your classmates will be stronger than most people experience in high school. When I talk with my friends who have not gone to a boarding school, they are close to their friends in high school, but in a different way. You guys ate together. In the respective dorms, you slept together. You guys walked together. You played together. You did everything you can together. You went to church together. You have a connection that very few people do. When the time is right, put your hands around your friend and pull them close and let them know that you care about them and that you want them to clean that keel and that you'll do anything you can to help them through that. And I know you guys will. You're an exceptional class. In closing, I would say this. Uh, it is neat. I, I mentioned this to some other people. Uh, when you're the last one, you may have to modify your speech a little bit in case somebody stole your thunder, right? Um, I had, uh, Ted, uh, the same concept in mind about uh, what I was going to talk about, and I appreciate you uh, mentioning to them and giving them the blessing the other night. I think that was awesome. Um, Del and I had thought for sure that I would mention to them about not being too young in that text, and when you shared that for chapel on Wednesday, I think it was, or Tuesday? Thursday night with the seniors and juniors. I thought that was precious. So seniors... I would leave you with the exact same blessing. It's the blessing that each one of these faculty have for you. It's the blessing that we shared with you on Thursday night when we had dinner together. This is from Numbers, and you'll remember this. May the Lord bless you and take care of you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give each one of you peace. God's blessings to you each. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. <clears throat> Good afternoon, honored guests, administration, platform members, teachers, family, friends, my mom, Beth. Hi, mom. <clears throat> oh, there you go. <laughs> Hi, mom. Hi, mom. I forgot she works here this year. Um, <clears throat> 
Okay, I don't intend to talk for a while, but I just have a short story for my class. Um, so every season, my mom puts up a wreath on our front door. And it's springtime, so she put up a spring wreath. And this wreath had like sticks going every which way and some flowers and stuff. And we live in Owasso, which is about right here. And we drove home one day and we noticed that some birds had started making a nest in the wreath. And we kind of ignored it. We came back a couple weeks later and we noticed that this mother bird now had four babies in the nest. And me and my brother Will, um, we, we kind of wanted to get a closer look at the baby birds. And so what we did was the door swings in and the baby birds are in the nest. And so we open the door, the baby birds have not come out of the nest yet, they can't fly or anything. And we've swung the door open and they're now under the threshold of our door, of our house and they're inside. And we're looking at them, you can only look, mm, sorry, you can only look at baby birds for so long, they weren't very interesting. And so we decided, okay, we're done looking at the baby birds. So I gently closed the door. My brother will say I slammed it. Don't listen to him. So I gently slammed the door, and two of the baby birds popped out of the nest. They had never flown before, and they kind of fell to the ground. And their, their legs were weak. They, were, they couldn't fly. They tried to flap their wings. And they were just there, hobbling around on the ground. And my brother immediately ran to the garage, and I did too, I followed, and he grabbed some garden gloves so he could pick them up, and I grabbed a broom. I don't know why I grabbed a broom. It didn't really do much. I thought I could corral the birds somehow. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so after several minutes of, at, while this is going on, what I assume to be the mother and father bird are jumping from tree to tree, screaming at us. Birds don't scream, but never mind. Um, squawking at us, and Will picked up one of the birds, he set it back in the nest, and we had one more to go. I was just still standing there with my broom, not knowing what I was doing. And Will goes and he picks up the baby bird, sets it back in the nest, and it jumps out probably four or five times. It, I don't know, it just kind of jumped out and Will would catch it in midair, he'd set it back in the nest, it would like fall over the edge of the wreath and like drop to the ground, he'd pick it back up and set it back in the nest. And this happened several times. And eventually, we got all four of the birds in the nest. They were just sitting there, cramped, because four baby birds in the nest is pretty cramped. And we put the gloves and the broom back, and um, we went on our way. And then the mother bird cautiously approached her traumatized babies um, after several minutes. And that's, that's the story. That's all it is. But I wanted to pull out some points from that. Um, the first thing is that the past 12 years have been our nest, and it's time for us to leave. And I'm not saying everyone will take off and fly. Those baby birds didn't. They fell to the ground. Um, but one thing I want you guys to realize is that if you keep God first and surround yourself with people who love you and love God, there will always be someone to pick you back up like my brother did with those baby birds. And another thing I want you guys to realize is that we may not be ready to leave our nest. Those baby birds weren't. I closed the door gently and they got pushed out. But we may not be ready to leave our nests. And I, like yesterday in Cade's talk in Exodus chapter three, Moses wasn't ready to lead God's people, but God called him and he said, this is your time. And so I'm telling you guys that this is your time to lead. I'm telling you, juniors, when we leave this school, this is your time to lead. I want the seniors to go, do, create, laugh, love, live, and serve. And juniors, leave this school next year better than when you found it. And that's it. So I guess if I can leave you guys with one thing, it's just to spread your wings, hold on to God, and don't be afraid to jump.
Good morning. It's a good morning for some, apparently. It's a good morning for these seniors that are graduating this morning. We're very proud of you. Thank you, Mr. Gardner, for being uh, the backup. And you did a phenomenal job as the backup. I hate to call you that. It sounds inferior, but you did a phenomenal job, and we appreciate your words. And Mr. President, Mr. Wallace, you also did a phenomenal job. I admire these gentlemen because they can get up here and speak as if they're just talking one-on-one -on -one with someone. They didn't seem nervous at all, looking at, out at the sea of faces. I have the, the privilege this morning to share with you and introduce some individuals on the platform, but share with you some of the accomplishments that these young people have accomplished over, the, over their academic career. And that's why we're here this morning to celebrate their accomplishments. And there are some Adventist universities who have also recognized their accomplishments and have granted these individuals scholarships. In a moment, I'll introduce Mr. Stephen Payne from Andrews University. But before I introduce him to the microphone and invite him to come up to the microphone, microphone I want to share with you that there are four other of our Adventist schools who have sent letters to our registrar with a total amount of scholarship awarded to the graduating class of 2017. I will begin with Southwestern Adventist University, and I am not gonna read the individuals, but rather with these universities, I will read the lump sum. Southwestern Adventist University granted the graduating class $36,000 in scholarships. Yes, we can clap for that. <laughs> Walla Walla University awarded a few of our graduates $92,000 in scholarships. Although the amounts were not listed, Union College in Lincoln, Nebraska has informed us that two of the seniors have guaranteed admission to the nursing program. So congratulations. <laughs> Aside from Andrews University, the university, the Adventist University that has granted the largest sum of scholarship is Southern Adventist University in the amount of $524,200. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize one of the graduates as it relates to Southern Adventist University. We, I have been reading the lump sum that has been granted to the graduates, but one of the graduates in particular received a full tuition scholarship in the amount of $86,200, and that is awarded to David Glenn. David, would you please stand? David, never in a million years would you stand up and even share that with anyone, and I'm guessing that there may be one or two of your classmates who knew that. But we want to recognize your accomplishment today, this morning, and we also want to encourage others to aspire to the same academic excellence that you have demonstrated. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Stephen Payne, who's vice President of Andrews University for Integrated Marketing and Communication. Well, Board Chairperson Jay Gallimore, Principal Garcia, Registrar Reichert, um, 
faculty, staff, family and friends who are here excited and joyous and maybe a little weepy, uh, juniors who are on the verge of peak leadership on this campus, and seniors who are in the final, final moments of your senior year. Um, I am glad to be here. As I have announced in previous years, and it continues to be true, so I will continue to tell you it. I have a lot of different responsibilities. By the way, my real job at Andrews is gum guy. And so if you hear people call me gum guy, that's because my real work there. And I have a lot of different appointments and meetings given the day, the week, the month, the year. But one immovable appointment is here in Cedar Lake, Michigan each year. And it is such a privilege to come and share graduation weekend with you. Um, I usually have a chance, as I did this year, to slip in uh, at the beginning of Vespers on Friday evening. And one thing that is true, and I experience this at no other academy, I can hear gloss seniors when they're coming. There's kind of this gentle, glorious clanking sound. So I didn't even have to turn around. I knew the processional had started. And it's important to not only hear the sound of your medallions, but the sound of the service and the passion and the commitment to God. You know, I've heard that in stories and testimonies in the gathering yesterday afternoon um, over there in the chapel where you gathered in a circle and prayed and sang together and honored each other. I hear it and saw it in the baptisms yesterday. Um, you also hear it and see it in your academic accomplishments, which we and other schools seek to honor. Three out of every five of you is graduating today with uh, high honors um, or honors. Um, I am here, though, to be part of that, and regardless of whether you go to Andrews or not, and one of the things that I hope is true is you have come to a school, and Cade talked about this last night, you've come to a school where you encounter God, God, as we talked last night in Vespers, in a burning bush, and the discussion that God has with us is not if you follow me, but when and how do you follow me. I hope and pray that you have opportunities to continue to do that. Maybe at one of these schools whose names have been read this morning. Maybe it'll be at another Christian university, an Adventist university, even if it's work. I pray that you continue to encounter God and listen to how he's calling your life. Anyway, regardless of where you go, since I am gum guy, and since this is Great Lakes Adventist Academy, there's two things with the gum. I've brought gum. It's this size. It's different flavors. Every senior gets a package of gum. No senior can chew it until they're on Highway 46. <laughs> I'm obligated to tell you that. Um, also, we heard about this yesterday in church. What's the most important book? And we've heard that throughout this weekend. You know this throughout your studies. And um, I brought uh, from my friends back at Andrews a Bible for each senior. And I was noticing in the case when I dropped them off over with Mrs. Reichert this morning, there's a case where it says perfect size. And you know, with all of our SART devices, the perfect size may be a Galaxy 8 or an iPhone 7 Plus, which is about half less than a Galaxy 8, I guess, given its name. But this is smarter than both of those combined. Take this with you. Um, finally, um, again, I invite you to choose a place that talks about and thinks about God. You know, as I drive in here every year, I now see the sign that says uplifting Christ, pursuing excellence, serving others. That's powerful, not just because it says it on the sign, but because you live it in your lives. At Andrews, we aspire to seek knowledge, affirm faith, change the world. Hopefully you'll see that in the lives of Andrews, not just on a sign out front. And uh, if you do choose us, we want to invest, as our sister institutions have done, in the sacrifice that you and your families make to find a place like that. Um, it is never enough to honor your accomplishments, but we will try to do a little bit of that today as well. Uh, here's the fine print on this. Um, oh, and by the way, I wanted to say, Mr. Gardner, I don't know who the nationally famous speaker was, but you are nationally famous in my heart after listening to you. Um, and it was good to hear about sailing. We talked about it yesterday, too. So here are the scholarships we're going to give. They're going to be based on a few different things. The Andrews Partnership Scholarship Grant is based on test scores and GPA. There are targeted scholarships for students that do a little bit better in those categories. There are students' uh, scholarships for specific programs or for, we talked about nursing. That has a special scholarship right now. 
And uh, every once in a while, some students get a full tuition scholarship, and we may hear about at least one of those today. All together, um, and I don't know how this works exactly. You may want to pull out your calculator, but I will give away in the next few moments. There's a certificate that looks about like this. I don't have one, but Mrs. Reichert has them. One million seven hundred seventy-three thousand eight hundred and twenty-four dollars. And again, seniors, that's a testimony to what you've done, the commitments that you've made. And I'm not sure which of you exactly gets the $24, but I think it'll be clear eventually if you keep track. Um, I'm going to call these students as groups. Also, by the way, I've sat with many of your faculty and staff, and I've probably promptly forgotten how to properly pronounce your name. And if that's true, you can call me Stepan Payne for the rest of my life. Anyway, here we go, 32,000. I'm going to ask you to all stand as I read your name, and then let's applaud the groups. Uh, 32,000 over four years, and this group is J.C. Snyder, Addison Kelly, Jonathan Miller, James Davis III, Jeffrey Gearing, Sarah Harnos. Oh, did I say that wrong, I feel. Okay, and Marcos Martins, Philip McDonald, Haley Reisinger, Samantha Romashko and Emily Hickman, 32,000 over four years. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Again, these are four year amounts. Sometimes it takes five years. So we don't give only 32,000 if that's the case. We would add an appropriate amount for that fifth year. The next group is a group of students who received 40,000 over four years. This is a mixture of $40,000 scholarships and also some scholarships that have targeted scholarships w worked into them, but altogether it's 40,000. Heidi Vesigel? Vesigel, sorry. I was gonna say bicycle, which would have been really bad. <laughs> That's the goal I have to say, Vesigel. A uh, Angel Loza, William Cox, Benjamin Wallace, Kendra Adams, Griffin Schnepp, Sierra Crook, Luke Ellis, Carmen Herman, Karina Hines, uh, Adam Vivian, all for $40,000. Congratulations. The next group is 48,000, and uh, this is a either $48,000 scholarship in a few cases, and you'll see this on your scholarship. It's a 40,000 scholarship plus an 8,000 targeted scholarship. That group is Austin Greenow, Abigail Thomas, Molly and Tallinn, Timothy Morgan, Andrea Stevens, Sarah Connor, and Elise Ghent. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah Connor. At least don't stand up yet, you're about to. Anyway, 48,000, 40,000. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna read a group of $56,000 scholarships, and these are actually 48,000, all of them, plus an additional 8,000 for a few different reasons. Now, Ilse Gent, please stand up. Austin Healing, David Glenn, Joseph Taylor, and Cade Lindberger. We talked about those nursing scholarships. Those are worth 76,000. There are two students who received that. Caitlin DeSiegel and Natalie Hutchins. And then finally, we do have one full tuition scholarship that is part of our presentation this year, and that is Danelle Abishan.
Once again, thank you for the great pleasure of joining you yet again. May God bless and with a Bible and fresh breath, and perhaps some of you, we look forward to jo having you join us at Andrews University. Amen. Before we move on to Elder Gallimore's remarks, I'd like to recognize two individuals behind me. One is Stephanie Smart, and one is Olena Rybacek. Both of these ladies have served our academy well, and they are choosing to uh, move on to different adventures. And Mrs. Rybacek has been playing our organ for the last several years, and we appreciate that. And I would just like to uh, take this moment to give them a special applause, too, for their service. This academy has many successes, spiritual, academic, service, and none of these successes could be possible without the support, the strong support of our conference. As a conference school, we are owned and operated by the Michigan Conference, and I have to just, I have to say this, I think I said this last year, I have been impressed over the last several years that I have been the principal of this academy with the amount of support, spiritual support, financial support that this conference puts into their youth. Camp Asable, education, and this institution, Great Lakes Adventist Academy. And I just wanna personally thank the conference and on behalf of the conference, invite our board chairman and conference president, Elder Jay Gallimore. It's already been a wonderful day and we are thrilled to see another class. To get to this day takes a lot of work and cooperation and part of my uh, work is to help us to remember and also to be thankful. Without the sisterhood of churches, 185 to 190 of those churches and the members of those churches returning a faithful tithe this would not be possible. And I'm grateful for their support and their love for their young people. And uh, really the Michigan Conference, is a, it's a really a collection of all these churches together. And as Adventists, we can do a lot of things together that we cannot do separately. The other thing that I want to um, say is a big thank you to the parents. Um, it's a, it's a big challenge to find a way financially to put your student at Great Lakes Adventist Academy or any of our academies. We have four in the state of Michigan, three day academies, one boarding academy. And I know it takes a lot of sacrifice to do that, but you've made a good investment and it will pay dividends. And I wanna thank you for it. My parents made those kind of investments in us and I'm grateful to this very day for those investments. The other thing that I want to say is that we are Seventh-day Adventist and we need to remind ourselves of that. It's been noted earlier, the real reason for the existence of this school is to help prepare our young people to take their place in Christ's church, in his body, and to become his missionaries, his agents, in a dying world. That is a great call, and my prayer is that we will see the coming of the Lord, that you will be part of helping to see Jesus come in your generation. So I just want to remind us of those things this morning. My final um, one is to recognize that we cannot get here without the, those sitting behind me. We have a great faculty here. I am grateful for them, their dedication, their love, their energy, the long hours. We never pay them what they're not, they're worth. 
the truth is we couldn't, and um, they didn't go into this for the money. They went into it because they wanted to be a service to your children and your young people. Join me in a thank all of you. Thank all of you. Good morning, everyone. Seniors of 2017, I too am very, very proud of you. As of last Thursday night, late, I went through all the records on RenWeb again, and I am so happy to say that every single one of these beautiful seniors have earned the diploma that they will receive at this time. The diploma that you will receive not only represents the hard work you've put in, but also the work of those that have supported you financially and with lots of encouragement. I'm thinking particularly of your family and your friends, your church, your conference, and of course your Bluff family. Great Lakes Adventist Academy is accredited by the Association of Seventh-day Adventist Secondary Schools and Colleges and by Middle States Association Commissions on Elementary and Secondary Schools. It is now with pleasure and congratulations that these accrediting bodies and your school acknowledge your graduation from secondary school. Congregation, we want to thank you in advance for holding your applause until all of the names have been read just so we can be sure we hear every one of them. Will the front row please stand? Benjamin Conrad Wallace, graduating with high honors, second generation. Danell Shiana Abishing, graduating with high honors. Cade Kolbeck Lewenberger, graduating with high honors, fourth generation. Caitlin Ann Besiegel, graduating with high honors. Luke Timothy Crane Ellis, graduating with high honors, fourth generation. Joseph Wesley Taylor, graduating with honors. James Cleo Davis III. Natalie Margaret Hutchins. Graduating with high honors, second generation. Cameron Josiah Connor, third generation. Jenna Marcel. DeVries, graduating with honors, third generation. Kendra Page Adams.
Heidi Noel Besiegel, graduating with high honors. Nicole Renee Besiegel, graduating with high honors. Brian Gregory Berger, graduating with honors. Dung Jun Choi. Ethan Charles Cleveland. Sarah Nicole Connor, graduating with high honors, third generation. William Merlin Cox, graduating with honors, second generation. Sierra Hope Crook. Jordan Isaac DeLong. <laughs> Daniel Seth Fickett, graduating with honors. <laughs> Emily Nicole Garcia, graduating with honors. Jeffrey Thomas Gearing, second generation. Ilsa Manuela Gent, graduating with high honors. David James Glenn, graduating with high honors, second generation. Justin Kenneth Greeno, graduating with high honors, fourth generation. Sarah Nicole Harnos. Austin Robert Haling, graduating with honors. Carmen Marie Herman, graduating with high honors. Emily Rose Hickman, third generation. Molly Sue Elizabeth Hidley. Karina K. Hines. Victoria Rose Imperio, graduating with honors, second generation.
Alec Jonathan Scott Johnson. Addison Grant Kelly. Leanne Elizabeth Coster. Michael John Cott. Third generation. Sao Liang Ko. Jennifer Nicole Landis. Angel Mitzi Lozo, graduating with honors. Marcos Roberto Martins, Jr. Philip Derek McDonald. Jonathan David Miller. Shestina Joy Miller, graduating with honors. Timothy Jacob Morgan, graduating with honors. Savannah Nicole Narango, graduating with honors. Caitlin K. Norcross, graduating with honors. Tashlin Grace Fletcher. Haley Madison Riesinger. Fourth generation. Matthew Scott Rigg, fourth generation. Samantha Nicole Ramoshko, graduating with honors, third generation. Jeffrey Tying Saley. <laughs> Griffin Taylor Schnepp, graduating with honors, third generation. Jason Lee Ann Snyder, graduating with honors, fourth generation. Andrea Esther Mayu Stevens, graduating with honors. Yeah. 
Abigail Lou Thomas, graduating with high honors. Molly Vu Antalan, graduating with high honors. Adam Scott Vivian, graduating with honors. Class of 2017, we love you and we will never forget you. Congratulations and may God bless you. At this point, I would like to invite any family members. The last row is just about there. Adam has long legs, and he's, he's cruising until his mom told him to stop. OK. Once this last row is seated in the back, I'm going to invite the graduates to remain seated for now. And this is an opportunity for anyone who would like to get a picture of the whole class to come on up. I'm going to give you about three to four minutes to do that. So this would be a good opportunity for you to, to snap that picture of the entire class of 2017. We will spend one more minute with pictures. I think the pictures that you have gotten are prob will probably suffice. Okay, thank you, parents and friends. There will be another opportunity for you to snap pictures with your graduate immediately following commencement.
Just a short note before we proceed. We have instructed the graduates to exit the building immediately as the recessional is being played, and we've instructed them to go straight into center campus. And it is at that location where we would like to have you take pictures with your loved ones, with your graduates. Because if we were to stop and pause here on the way out or even in the door, it's going to get very congested with 58 graduates. So we're encouraging all of you as family and friends to find your graduate out in the center campus. We are grateful to the good Lord for holding off the rain for us because the weather was fluctuating some and, and we're grateful for sunny skies. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce to you the graduates of 2017. Stand up. The congregation may now be seated. I would like to invite and introduce to you, I'd like to introduce to you and invite them to stand, the new senior class of 2018. Please stand and face the audience. Thank you, seniors. You may now turn around. Please stand with me for prayer. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing all of us here today. Um, thank you for each one of my classmates, and we ask that you please um, be with each one of us and lead us and continue to guide us. We love you so much. In your name I pray, amen. The congregation may be seated.